Hey guys, in this video we've got the Arma Granite 3S Retrofit build and this is part two. So we did the part one and there will be a link for that one right up here so you can see the first part of this. Um, this one, we've already done the servo replacement and we rebuilt the slipper clutch and we showed you an easy field fit way to get going if you don't have the parts. However, if you have the parts, go ahead and use new ones. We do recommend that. In this video, we're going to do something a little different than was on our playlist to start with. In this one, we're going to pull the pumpkins apart and we're going to have a look at the differentials and the drive axles. Make sure that's all good to go. If that goes pretty easy, then we'll move on to suspension, shock absorbers, and all that. This will be a lot of fun, guys, and it's a bench build just like the last one. Check this out. All right, so in the last video, we showed you how to get the slipper clutch assembly and all of that, the motor and everything, that whole cartridge out of the car. So we're gonna forego that on this one. If you wanna see how that's done, check out part one and we show you how that's all done. So we're gonna start right now. And what we have is, we've already got the slipper clutch assembly and the motor is out and that's pretty straightforward. But we've got some things to take apart here and here to get to the differentials. And we want to have a look at these drive lines and whatnot so we're gonna to have to pull this all apart which means these shocks are all coming off so we'll wind up not using them again so while we have it apart we'll probably wind up installing the new shocks as well but we need to get in and check the pumpkins first so let's dig into this thing and get it done okay so let's get these shocks off they have to come off because the diff housing is two pieces and have to be able to separate so they must be detached we're going to replace them anyway, so this is going to work out for all of us here. Now, with the oil leaking out, these things do make a heck of a mess. Check that out. And that's just because it has bad seals, and over time it's leaked all of the fluid out. Each one of these is dry. All right, so now we got to de detach the bumper too, because that also attaches the to the shock tower side. So we'll back these two screws out, and if you'll notice, the O-ring section is broken. Now we'll take the screws out of the bottom and we'll get this bumper assembly off and that'll give us access to all the components underneath. There is this one extra screw right here that you want to make sure and get. There we go. Now we'll detach the top turnbuckles and that should free everything up. and it should lift right off. There we go, nice and clean on the inside, that's encouraging. Taking a look at all the teeth, looking at the drive axles, everything looks like it's in pretty good shape here. We could go and clean this all up, but we're gonna clean it up when we're done here and the internals are nice anyway, so we'll go ahead and lube it up. Here we go, and put it back together. Now, these differentials feel really good back and forth, so we're not gonna break them open. This is fine like this. If you do have any question marks, breaking those open would be a good idea. So let's put it back together now because we know that the pinion and the ring gear there are all good. And just a matter of putting the screws back in. Don't forget the one on the chassis because that one's one that's got to go in there. There we go. And tighten everything by hand, guys. Always tighten by hand. Here we go. And we'll get these turnbuckles hooked back in here. Now these can be a little finicky to get in there, but they do fit. So just have some patience and they'll go. Line everything up and that screw will go right in. Here we go. Just like that. Let's go ahead and get them both connected here and then we'll tighten everything down. That's not too bad. Run them down. Nice, and check the torque on them. Don't want to torque these a lot, just make them snug. Beautiful, okay, now we're just gonna put this back together temporarily. We are gonna change the O-ring that's broken. Okay, that being done, let's 
give a feel. Everything spins freely, everything's good. Let's check the back. Just like before, we'll get the shocks out of the way first. Okay, nice and easy. And look at the mess on those shock absorbers. Wow. Now the newer plastic ones have improved components in them and they don't leak like this. This is an earlier version, so they leak pretty badly. Go ahead and pull this one out. And if you take a look, this ring's broken as well, so we're gonna change them both. get them screws out of there so we don't lose anything. Notice we like to keep them isolated on the mat there so we know right where everything came from. So we'll put these ones right there. So you'll notice there's three screws that you have to take off here and they go down into the shock tower. Let's go ahead and remove the turnbuckles again. And this should lift right off. There we go. And the encouraging part is this one's clean on the inside as well. So let's feel it. Feels pretty good. I don't hear any unwant sound. Everything sounds pretty good there. Let's get a feel on the pinion. Yeah, pretty nice. So we try to inspect all the teeth on this and make sure there's no undue wear in there. If there's wear, we would replace the differentials ring. Since this is good, we're gonna go ahead and lube it back up and put it back together. Now, like I say, we could pull all the, all the differentials apart completely and check the fluid and everything, but my son-in-law likes the way this runs and we're just gonna go ahead and go with it. Generally, we don't have trouble with the internals. It's usually the ring gear and pinion that we have issues with. So let's go ahead and get these drive axles put back together and lining them up takes a little trick here, but they do go. And again, we had a good look at those while they were laying there and all the components seem to be good. There's a little bit dirty, but that's not a big issue. These things will handle that and we will have this cleaned up before we're done here. There we go. Now when you're using power tools, don't forget to go nice and slow on all this stuff. Don't hurry, because you don't want to heat up the plastic. The friction of the screw going in at high speed can heat the plastic up and then your screws will never stay in place. Always nice and slow. Again, we're going to go ahead and temporarily put this back together. We'll go after those rings in a bit here. So let's get the tires and wheels off. We'll speed this up good. These are in really bad shape. Okay, so we had one of these hubs come apart and it was just a loose grub screw, so we'll put it back together. There we go. Now these are the compression rings that we need to replace because they're broken on the front and the back. So let's go ahead and back all the screws out and there's a total of four that hold these in place. Two to the bumper and two to the tower. And the nice thing is these parts are not overly expensive. Same thing in the rear. And I know we're kind of doing this in the long-winded way of doing it, putting everything back together and then taking things apart, but that's so each section can be done individually if you need to. You can fast forward to the arms and everything, 
and do that part or you can do the bumper part. So we're doing this so that you have basically complete sections you can look at if you're having trouble with your RC. So here are the new arms that we're going to put on it. So let's get these out of the packet and see what comes in here. So there's one arm there. There's another arm there and the instructions, I recommend you read those. And then there's the two screws that retain the pins. Now I'll show you how those go in here in a second. So let's have a look at this one and it looks like it's in good shape. Feels a little snug in there actually. So this is a small file and we're just going to clean up some of the tailings from the molding process. They don't always get those clean and sometimes you have to file a little bit to get everything to move nice and smoothly. Filing's not a bad thing, don't overdo it, just enough to make things fit right. Now these have to be pushed all the way in so be careful and push that pin through and it'll push it up against the stop in the back and then this screw will retain it from this side and do not over torque this one. Get it down flush and let it be. Just like that. There you go. Perfect. Now let's clean up the other side a little bit and get this one off. And you push those right through and then just pull them out with a pair of pliers. Easy. Nice. Let's do a little clean up here. Nice. Now we'll check the fit on this one. And it's a little snug, so we're going to clean this one up as well. When you're filing, try to be even. Figure out where it's binding and then just work it a little bit until you get it to move evenly. Nice. Push this in so that screw will go in there. So you have to recess it a little bit. And then the screw will cap the end and that'll keep the pin from coming out. There you go. Nice and smooth. Let's go ahead and get the brace on the back here. And this keeps it from breaking the rear of the chassis when you land awkward. There we go, the small screw there, and then you've got the long one that goes down into the shock tower right there. Always torqued by hand, nice. So here are the concussion rings that we want to use, and these are replacing the broken ones, and they're the same front and back, so it, there's no difference between them. You can put them on either end. So the two screws go into the bumper section, and this is the rear of the car here. And then push it up against the shock tower, line those up, and then put the other two screws in from behind. Just like that, and check your torque. There we go, a little clean up. Now we'll do the same thing for the front. Now 
Notice we only had to pull the two screws out to get that plate off. You didn't have to pull all the ones we did when we did the shock tower because if you pulled them all, then it would come apart again. So you just want to keep the back two in, but pull the two that are necessary to get the bumper off. There's our brace. And let's start on this side. And this one already has an RPM arm on it on the right, but since we have a new pair, we're gonna change them both here. Let's slip this one out. There we go. And here's the new ones. And just a reminder here, guys, if you haven't read these when you get when you get these out of the packet, be sure to read that little instruction manual because you never know what you could learn there. And sometimes things aren't as obvious as they seem. So reading the instructions is always recommended. A little more cleanup and let's see how it fits. And again, this one's a little snug, so we're gonna to have to do a little filing to get it to move easily. Nice and careful here. And when they injection mold these, usually they are a two-part mold assembly, and so you'll get these little flanges that stick out from where the two molds come together. We're basically just cleaning that off here. And we are being really careful here not to over file that to give slop to it. We want to keep it fairly snug in there, but just not binding. You get this lined up right. Push the pin through, there we go. And then recess it enough, there you go, so that we can get the screw in there to capture it. Just like this. Beautiful. That'll do. Let's do the other side here. Now this is an RPM arm, so we can push this right out through the small hole in the front because the screw's in the back on this one. So. It's a little bit different than the factory ones, but it still works good. A small Allen wrench will do the job. There we go. And it seems a little weird to take an RPM arm off to put a new one on, but this will be an excellent spare. These things can go on either side of the car. So if he breaks a front one, he'll have an extra, which is nice. Little cleanup. And let's check the fit. That one's not too bad. Let's go ahead and put this on as is. Perfect. Now we'll get the outer hub connected. And I'm going to line this up here. It looks a little goofy. There we go. And then we're going to push it through. Be real careful doing this and then we'll capture it with the screw. Nice. So that all looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and put the brace back on the front here and that'll let us get our bumper in place. But let's do a little clean up here first and let's go ahead and install this now. There we go. And again, there's only this small screw in the back and the longer screw in the front and the longer one goes up into the shock tower. Beautiful. Check your torque. And let's change the concussion ring for the front now. We'll set it in place and we'll fix it down. Check your torque as usual.
and then right up against the shock tower and line up your holes. Perfect. There we go. Nice. Feels good. Let's get them screws in there. There we go, new rings. Now, let's take a look at the shocks. These are big bore shocks and they were purchased on eBay and you can find them by just searching the car. It'd be Arma Granite 3S big bore shocks and these pop up all over the place. They are a pretty good shock, so let's have a look inside. And it's got the standard plunger in there. And these are usually pretty well built, but the shafts on them are a lot bigger and they do handle the impacts pretty well. So we're gonna use a nice light fluid because we run in rough terrain and it runs a little better with the lighter fluid for what we do. And a lot of what my son-in-law does is in the yard and, and hitting the little ramps and running in the grass with the dog and stuff. And we've discovered that the lighter fluid handles better in those conditions for what he's doing. So we'll use this 20 weight and we'll get that all set up here. Leave a little space at the top there so the air has a place to compress and then we'll tighten it down. And they all get done the same way. So we'll do the other three off camera and we'll get them down just like this. One, two, three, four. Same weight in all four guys, same weight. Now there's a bushing that goes in here and that will take up the slop for the screw. It'll keep the shock from damaging the screw and so forth. There we go. And we'll get the bottom attached. And it's the same for all four shocks. So we're just gonna let this roll now. Let's get the tires on now. And these are factory replacement tires for this vehicle. So these are the ones that belong on it. So we'll speed this up and we'll just get all four tires on real quick. And I know in the first video we already installed this, but in this one, since this is the final installation, we're going to seal the bottom and this is HVAC tape, it's aluminum, and it molds itself nicely to the bottom and it keeps the dirt and debris out of the gearbox, which is important here. So we'll go ahead and stick it on there and make sure you don't, if you're going to use this, don't press it down against the gear, just around it so the gear can turn freely inside. This works really good, guys. So let's get it back in the car now and you just line it up with the rails in there move the car back and forth till it snaps in place just like so and then let's connect the wires nice and now we'll put the red block in there to keep things from moving and let's put that screw back in to hold everything in place Just like that. Okay, looking good. Now we need to get the drive line in, but first we need a little hub. So we'll put the hub in, and then there's a sleeve that goes over that. It's a protector, it's plastic, so it'll slide right on there. And then we'll put the drive line in. And this one is a spring drive line, so put one in, in, compress it, line everything up, and just move the car and it'll snap right into place, just like that. So let's get on to the body now. And this is a boost body, 
but at the same time it's on the same chassis so this should go right on. See if we can get these lined up, make sure we're good here. We're on on the back, won't go down in the front. Let's have a look at that. See, we're still looking good there, but it's hitting something. So the body is actually hitting the bumper mount. So this piece right here needs to be trimmed out. Let's do that real quick. There we go. Now it should drop right into place. There we go. Perfect. Clip it down. Nice. There you go. Okay guys, so there's the build for the Arma Granite 3S and you know, this one had a lot of miles on it. It really did and it needed some love and attention and it doesn't take all that much to do so. However, the new arms that are on here, they are just a little bit different in the way they go on. So I highly recommend that you read this. This comes with the arms, it'll help you get them on correctly. Also, the arms are injection molded, so there can be debris and stuff where the molds come together. You need to file that down a little bit to get in these hinge point areas, get it to sit in there so it moves evenly and smooth. You don't wanna stick it in there if it binds, do just a little filing to get it to fit properly. That's gonna make a big difference. On the shock absorbers, these do come with extra end pieces in case you break one, which is really nice. You know, these we get these quite a bit on eBay. We've never had a problem with one. This thing is going to rip now, and with the new suspension, it sticks, and that's what it's supposed to do. In the terrain we run in, that's gonna be a big advantage. That being said, we did go ahead and lube everything to make sure all the bearings and stuff are running properly, and of course, we bagged up all the extra stuff because you never know when you're going to need something, even if it's just one of those tires, if it's an off brand. If you're just goofing off for the afternoon and need something to get running, that's the way to go. The new body did go right on, but we did have to do a little trimming in the front to get it to clear the mount for the front bumper, and that was really important. The body does fit, but that little bit of trimming is necessary. All that being said, we really do appreciate you guys hanging out and checking these videos out. The whole point of this is to help new people understand how to work on a vehicle. We're not really trying to take anything away from the hobby stores. It does help them pay their bills to do repairs on people's cars. But when they're simple and it's something that you really are attached to, there's just some kind of joy that goes with wrenching on it yourself. These aren't really all that difficult to do, and we do try to help you understand what's going on. That's the whole point. If you haven't already, don't forget to bash that like button and help our content spread. You know, this is always a good time, and it really is half the hobby. You go out and run with your friends, and that's exciting, but when you can turn on some music in the background and just sit down and start tuning on something, that can be a pleasure all its own. And those of you that build these things, you know what I'm talking about, it's really cool. If you have anything you'd like to add to this video, please feel free to leave it in the comments down below and help others along the way. Hey guys, for AJ Jam Studios, I'm AJ Sand. Keep wrenching, guys.